part of the social and cultural richness of the world created by the skill and the hard labor of past generations capable of being used for decades and centuries ahead. They reflect a way of life in which many regions is still continuing. But in other regions, terraces have been abandoned because of the hard work involved in out migration. The challenge in such regions is to find new ways of life and viable activities which will make good use of this inherited resource. The solutions can be based upon and justified by the long-term public benefits that territorial size can yield. These benefits include the production of food and fiber, the prevention of soil erosion, the mitigation of climate change, the control of flooding, the effective management of water systems, the protection and enrichment of habitats, protection and management of these distinctive landscapes, conservation of the cultural heritage, diversification of rural economies by adding value to products from terrace cultivation, educational value of terraces, and of the human and natural stories which they embody. The traction of these landscapes for tourism, the sustaining of rural populations, which might otherwise add to the flood of people into the city. This rich range of benefits of public goods justifies the injection of communal resources at local, regional, national, continental and global scale into the maintenance and, where necessary, the redemption and creation of terrorist land. It should be taken into account in the evaluation of options related to terrorist landscapes. It points to the need for research and policy making to draw on a wide range of disciplines and knowledge systems. In the field of terrace landscapes, we recognize the central role of peasants. And with peasants, we mean paysan, camponese, contadini, campesino, bauern, whose forebears created the terrace system by deep understanding of nature and skillful use of available materials. We salute the hard work, the dignity and self-reliance of peasant families, and the contribution that they make to the identity of terrace landscapes. The local knowledge should be fully recognized in debates and decision-making about the terrace lands as it is crucial to the future health of the terrace landscapes. We also draw encouragement and many practical ideas from the exchanges during the meeting of the 10 field visits in Italy. We note with high interest the approach to analysis and appreciation of landscapes embodied in the European Landscape Convention, principles we can apply elsewhere in the world. By adopting the Convention, many European governments have committed themselves to identify, evaluate, and prepare objectives with full public consultation related to all the landscapes in their territory, and to secure protection and management of all landscapes and promote redemptive action where that is needed. That is a clear evidence that terrorist landscapes, even where abandoned, can be considered for revival. We welcome the growing interest in the revival of abandoned terrace systems. Mapping and research by the Italian government and others is laying the groundwork for such actions. In a growing number of places, local communities, local authorities, and even groups of young farmers are leading this revival. It is refreshing to see the growing commitment among young people in farming the land and call for action by governments and others to support them in these ambitions through vocational education, on-the-job training, retirement grants for older farmers, financial support for newcomers and other techniques. We support initiatives to introduce children to the living heritage of terrace landscapes, as we have seen with the school project. The viability of small farms, including those using territories, can be greatly enhanced by the strengthening of local economies, including the adding of value at local level to food products and by the introduction of more circular systems in local economies including local food systems and short supply chains, which reduce dependence on external inputs and markets. We call on local and regional authorities, community leaders and others to support that process. The heritage qualities of terrace landscapes and the food produced from them can also offer a unique experience to visitors and bring complementary income to local people. We call upon international organizations, governments, local authorities, landowners, commercial interests, rural communities, peasants and other hands-on producers, educators, researchers and all relevant stakeholders to commit themselves to the protection 
<coughs> and long-term maintenance of territories. They should incorporate respect for terrorist landscapes in all relevant policies and programs, notably those for support for agricultural development, environment protection, water and river catchment management, spatial and territorial planning and regional development. We entrust the International Terrorist Landscape Alliance to take the lead in promoting multinational exchanges of ideas and experiences and to assist the strengthening of initiatives and networks in this field. That's the Isla Manifesto from Padua 2016.